Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to tackle a nightmarish painting subject, particularly this one. So we're going to look at how I approach painting this crazy scene, tons of details, tons of highlights, tons of shadows. This is what I got, and I really hope you'll enjoy this process with me. What I really want to show you is that it is possible to get these scenes down. There are a couple of ways of tackling it. And it's for those instances where a scene really captures you, but you have that internal dialogue that's negative, that how am I gonna tackle this? How am I gonna get all the details in? You give up and then you feel bad maybe with it. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to indeed paint these kinds of scenes. Let's take it to the table and get started. So let's get right to it. Now, when you're working on these types of scenes, at first glance, it may seem super complex, like really difficult, all of these details, all of these metal pieces running around the scene, but it actually can play in our favor. Because when you're bombarded with so much detail, you really have no choice but to simplify. Now, I want to take a step back just for a minute and talk about that, okay? You have actually two options here. The first option is from the beginning, you decide you want to be super accurate and then you have to work really small resolution. You have to draw every little element very accurately and try to imitate it as you see it. That's your first option. I'm not a big fan of that because I don't enjoy it as much. So I'm going to go the other way around and heavily simplify. Okay, I will still aim for a somewhat realistic impression, but I am going to greatly simplify this. So these are the way I see it, the two main options. We're gonna go with option number two, simply because I enjoy it uh, more. But again, you look at this as the first attempt of many and as a preparatory step for a more finalized larger piece if you're interested in doing that. So let's get started. Now what I'm looking for is the main shapes here. Just main shapes. The, the biggest distinction I can make is between the uh, sky and the rest of it. So what guides us through the sky is actually the contour shapes of the industrial area. So I'm going to start with that. Uh, and the easiest place I can find is this corner. You see we have these two kind of rounded structures, okay? And then what happens is they kind of go downwards like this, go back up, just shapes, okay? It's just shapes. I'm not even uh, regarding the, the chimneys right now, I don't care about those. Uh, there's a different name for these, right? A more serious, like, <laughs> name for the chimneys. It's not homes, it's industrial. So I, I just forgot it. I know I, it slipped my mind, but I know it. Uh, and you see, I got all of the contours somewhat in a detailed manner of the sky and the ground or the, the factory, whatever that is, okay? Now, once we got that down, what do we have inside this area? The sky I'm gonna leave for now, I'm not gonna touch it. But what do we have in the lower area? So the way I see it, there is this huge shed that casts a big shadow. And we have the elements that are closest to us. So we have this fence here that I do want to get, this metal um, kind of a fence. So that's diagonal like this. Then we have this metal kind of, I don't know uh, what you'd call these. Going on. There's going to be a lot of, I don't know, this thing's name in this video, so bear with me. Uh, all sorts of metal planks and rods and whatever. So kind of like that. Plenty of those. And we have this large, again, shed that kind of goes across the entire thing. Casts a pretty big uh, shadow to the left, so this area is pretty much black. And then we have a bunch of other details. So let's get those in. Aside from uh, this shed, we have some lines of perspective coming right towards us, leading us from this section. Now, I don't even know if it's gonna read as anything, so you'll have to bear with me. A lot of times when you paint this kind of a thing in a simplified manner, what will often happen is you kind of have to let go of the essence of what you see, like the, the actual meaning, sorry, of what you see and focus on the essence when it comes to shapes. So, and I talk about this in almost every video where heavy simplification is involved. So now hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, you have to let go of what's there, like logically and just paint it out as you see it. So this is what I'll attempt to do here. Now all of these chimneys, they're basically, um, 
vertical lines to help us break through the monotony of the horizontal line. So let's put some of them in. We have one here, we have one there. We have a bunch of these. Another one farther at the back, another one yet again closer. Try to keep the distances different to add some interest, okay? If it really has to be loyal to the reference and they're close, so be it, and the, the distances are the same, so be it. For me, I do try to um, keep some of the um, distances interesting and varied, you know, and all of that. Now, there's no way I'm gonna actually draw the whole thing. That's gonna really confuse me. So, what I have now is actually enough for me personally, okay? You may find you need more uh, details. And by the way, I'm really not accurate here. This should go like this. Then we have this shed here. Then this should be slightly lower than that. And here we get this curved road twist. It's not even a road. I wouldn't know how to call it, but it's kind of a road uh, pathway that curves towards us. Okay. <clears throat> and this is a wall, and this changes its directions here. This goes farther in the distance into perspective. Now, if I'm going to start adding in a lot of details now, I'll, I'll lose it completely. So what I'm going to do is do an initial wash that the goal is to basically cover everything up that's not fully white or close to white, and I'm going to paint around the highlights. It's going to be a challenge because there's a bunch of them, but here's how not to worry about it so much. And what I'm going to do is allow myself the right and the, the privilege of going back with a white pen and adding some details later because there are so many strong highlights, okay? So let me prep some stuff. We're going to paint the first stage and then we're going to move on to the next. So if you remember in one of my recent videos, I think it's the newest one, uh, I talk about helping yourself making the process easier. So if you're going to focus on something with very complex light and shadow, go black and white. So this is exactly what I'm going to do here. It's going to make my life easier um, to mix the color I need. So here we go. We go with, uh, I forgot what this black is named, but I know it's by St. Petersburg, White Knights paints, okay? So that's the kind of color we'll use for the entirety of this painting. Now, here is where it gets a little complex. Ideally, when I have a student here physically next to me, I can really explain this well, but uh, we'll have to make do. What I'm trying to do now is, as I mentioned before, let go of what's there and paint it as I see it. So look at all these patterns for the clouds. I can draw them in, actually. I didn't draw them initially, but that's fine. I can add, so we have a major cloud here. We have a major parting of the clouds here through which you can see the sky, which is essentially darker than the clouds. So there's all sorts of details here. I'm not going to need the drawing too much because clouds are such an abstract shape. But my goal here is to mimic the way I see it. So let's get started. We'll hopefully uh, be able to understand it better as we go along. So we have this cloud here and I'm just trying to match the value I see. It looks a little darker, so let me mix some more paint and just pour that in and gradually darken it. Now notice how it has a variety of edges to it. So what I'm going to do is come back with some water and because I'm working on an isolated area, I can really take my time and I'm just going to start blending it right in, okay? And have uh, a controlled variety of edges, okay? Some areas are going to be a little hard edges, some are going to be softer. This area is a little darker. I'm helping the paint move and fill it up, you see? Most of the transitions around this cloud are pretty um, pretty blended and loose, so uh, I'm gonna heavily blend it. You see, I'm, I'm just helping the paint move. Now, if you think it needs to be um, darker, you just go right back in and add some paint to it, you see? Actually, I'm so... <laughs> I'm super nice, I just wanted to show you how to do it. It doesn't actually have to be darker, but yeah, we'll, we'll deal with it. I just added some water, spread it out a bit. So now this moves back into some white clouds, relatively white. So I'm just gonna use some pure water and create very light mid values. Now I know it may seem odd what I'm doing right now, but I'm just rendering the shapes of the clouds, okay? This transition is gradual, so let's help the paint move here gradually. Like so, we got one cloud. Now let's continue on to the next area that's slightly darker, and that is, you see the parting of the clouds here. So I'm trying to create this very loose and abstract shape 
of the sky showing through the clouds. Okay, like this. And I'm going back and blending some edges where uh, I see the transition is fairly smooth. Not in all areas, actually. Most transitions in this section are uh, rough. Now, again, if we're going to get a big mess, you'll have to forgive me with this entire scene because it is very challenging. I will admit, this, <laughs> the title of this video is kind of how to deal with a nightmarish reference. So that's what we're doing here. Um, I'm going to blend some of this edge right around here. And then I'm going to come back with a lighter value and add a shadow under the cloud here. It's slightly a lighter value. And again, I'm detaching from what's actually there, the sh actual shape of the clouds, and I'm just painting them as I see them, okay? Now you'll notice that within the cloud there are some lighter shapes, so I can get those in. And ideally, if you want to get these really accurate, you take your time a little more. Um, for me, the clouds aren't the, the main subject here, so I don't mind kind of going through them fast. Um, but the more time you take, the better the result's gonna be. Now, this doesn't make sense at all at the moment, and that's fine, because don't forget we're still uh, really in the initial stages and um, there is no context. You don't have the, the darkest darks and the, the buildings aren't there yet, so, so that's fine. Now there is a bit of a dark patch here, a couple of darker patches underneath. You see the sky through here. And the size also has a pretty large influence on how much detail you'll be able to get in. So if you are looking for more details, more accuracy, generally there are some sizes you'll have to paint larger than to get these. Um, so so yeah, I'm, I'm working pretty small here. What is it, like a sixteenth of a sheet? But in any case, I hope that makes sense. Now we can start working on the actual structures. Okay, now we're gonna take our time. It's not gonna be easy, but in fact, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in this entire wash and just skip the highlights. Let's change our course of plan. This was what I initially had in mind. So I'm just gonna cover the whole thing up, avoiding the highlights. Now, will I do a perfect job in avoiding the highlights? Probably not, because there's a million of them. But I'm gonna do my best. Okay, so here we have this thing in the shadow like that, leaving that highlight for the chimney. And here we have these curved shapes for the structure. And underneath that, we have a bit of this going on. This is why I can't really, you know, I can't fully verbalize what I'm doing because it's just working my way around all sorts of shapes. Um, it can make for a quite a boring tutorial at times, but I do trust that this will end up being uh, interesting overall. So hopefully you'll bear with me uh, and we'll get an interesting result. Now here is where we get this light kind of rooftop atop the shed. So that's a stop line essentially. We can for now disregard what happens under that. And this will give us more time to work on the top section. So we have all of these different uh, elements of the factory, power plant. I have no idea what this is really. Um, some of you may be able to tell with a more, you know, professional eye. And a lot of people, I have, like what I love about you and the, everyone, the audience here on Instagram and everywhere is just a variety of all sorts of people with, you know, doing all sorts of things and life experiences. So I do learn a lot just from reading the comments and, you know, listening to what people say. So that's really nice. Um, an extra benefit for me. Now here are the uh, chimneys. So this is again, it's just a compositional means to add some to break the monotony of the shapes. But notice how it also works really nicely in this light area of the clouds. Um, it works compositionally well. And I have achieved this just by following the reference to be to be fair. I didn't change anything really to to get this to be more, you know, interesting for now, kind of just following what I see and that's good enough, which is what attracted me to this photo in the first place. Uh, it's just a very interesting reference in my opinion. <clears throat> so again, we're going to kind of cover the whole thing up slowly but surely. Um, there's another one here. Let's get it wet and wet, see what happens. Um, 
so yeah, getting in all the details, uh, trusting that it will connect to something interesting. Uh, and remember, we will have the next layers to add some more details and some more distinctions and some more, you know, just the, the white highlights and all of those things. Uh, try to focus on the, the borders of the shape because that's where um, a lot of these details are going to be visible. Okay, the, where the border is, is our opportunity to add some interest. So I can add this ladder here. Uh, I can add this, you know, railing, security, safety railing. I can add all sorts of, you see these small shapes that I make up on the spot. Um, and thanks to our stop line, we don't have to worry about what happens here yet. Okay. Uh, so in any case, rendering those shapes in, um, I know this step is messy. Ruth came into the studio. Mm. Um, so yeah, rendering those shapes. Now notice how we have this very dark spot here. I'm going to just put that in at this point, because why not? It's going to be fairly dark. And again, we're kind of moving to, into abstract land here. There's this um, staircase that goes like this. And I have to say, you know, with watercolor, you have this element of uncertainty, even when you're painting scenes you're familiar with and you're comfortable with. So it, to say that I have no idea what will come out of this is true, but that's the, the case for many tutorials. Actually, someone I really admire talked about this, Patrick Lee Greaves, and his excellent channel, Pure Watercolor. I know he's not been as active lately as he was before, but it's really worth checking out. And he said that uh, the, the, the process and filming the painting process is really a hit or miss kind of situation because you don't know you can spend so much time on a painting not knowing if it will turn out to be worthy of a tutorial and you know me i'm not that judgmental towards my um my art i'm really i feel very free to share processes that are failed and processes that succeeded kind of the same um but I know I'm aware of what he's saying. It's really true. You can spend a long time on a, on a tutorial and end up with a painting that isn't really, um, to some, worthy of being used as a tutorial. Um, what I will say is that I really embrace this factor of watercolor. I really embrace it to the point of, okay, so if I can't tell if it's gonna be worth it, then I might as well share it and share the, the, the successes and failures alike. And this is something I've been getting a lot of messages on recently. And, and in the past, I would get even more of like people enjoying that I share the failures. Uh, and I think that's the best because you get to see how so many of my paintings, my own paintings, don't turn out the way I planned them to. But it's like that cliche, you know, uh, you don't fail unless you quit, really. So if you keep going um, like this, this is just a bunch of random stuff. I'm just going to go through it like this, you see? Barely paying any attention. I might as well just enjoy making the shapes and kind of uh, defining them rather than trying to carefully paint around them and, and you know, really go crazy uh, due to it. So you, know, you see some details I'm just going to put in very quickly, loosely. But in any case, back to my point, I'm just saying that uh, that cliche is true. You know, if if you haven't quit, uh, you can't really lose. So if this iteration didn't come out the way I wanted it to, I can just have more and more and more iterations until I get it to look right. So, you know, I don't, it's very rare with this kind of a process to get everything right the first time. So actually what's required of you is to not give up more than even to be skilled. Uh, I know it's kind of a, it's a funny, concept to think about because unlike oils and acrylics where you can work your painting more and more and improve it a lot of the process is about patience and and you know waiting and 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 giving it the time it needs letting the painting rest going back revisiting it improving it here you don't have that luxury at some point the painting is done so you might as well just do another iteration you know that's really important i see most people that that succeed they had that mentality now and most people that fail just that's because they they quit not because they failed so a lot of it is in your control now at this stage i'm looking at the whole thing thinking to myself am i missing something is something wrong overall in the composition so one thing i notice is there aren't many highlights here and i left quite a few so let's kill off all of these highlights you see, there is the white wall coming through, but I'm just gonna cover it up. This shouldn't be white at all. Um, 
And uh, if you just examine the, the overall structure here, think to yourself, am I pleased with it or did I miss some stuff? For example, I do feel like this area should have some more details in it and some more dark spots. This area as well, there's this rooftop here. The chimneys are darker. We could add that in the next wash, but I'm gonna go ahead and start indicating those in right now. And if some areas are wet, then I'm fine with it. Uh, we have another one around here. This should be taller, remember? We have another one at the back, actually. This should be darker. So you see how I'm slowly adding more and more details, building it up. And right now, I'm aware it still looks very abstract and it may look abstract all the way till the end. Remember, this is a nightmarish subject, so we're gonna deal with it. Actually, these areas are gonna require some more touches. So I'm gonna start adding in, you know, these darker shadows. And remember, the contours, the, the outlines are where you get the opportunity to show so much of this. So I'm just gonna add a lot of details relatively to these areas, the outlines. Now, this isn't white and it's not as light, so I'm gonna kill off that highlight. And then get some wet and wet for the darkest shadows, you see? So like this, here we get a bunch of details and this continues to this section here and around the chimney and around this. Now, don't worry, a lot of these things will fix later on when we add some opaque paint or the white uh, gel pen. So we'll have an opportunity to patch up the light shapes as well, not just the dark shapes. And we'll need it. Okay, we will need it. Um, so a bunch of these dome-like shapes here. A fairly abstract mess, um, which I love. Now let's go like this. I, I find that I enjoy doing these scenes that are very, um, usually it's in the context of architecture, so just very uh, abstract architectural shapes, but sometimes it's more like human-made structures, like this factory, uh, or whatever that is. Uh, so I enjoy these alike. Uh, so here's the thing. Let's let this now rest for a bit, um, because what I want to do is distance myself from it and see it in better light. So we'll, we'll let this rest, we'll let it dry, then I'm gonna come back and work in a more zoomed in fashion. I'll actually stop here, take a look at this section, and think to myself, what is it missing? How can I improve it? That's one of the ways to improve these things because if we look at the whole thing for the first wash, that's good because we, we need to look at the entire thing in order to not basically lose our sanity. But for the next steps, if we want to get in more accurately, we'll have to zoom in on the different areas, okay? So let's let it rest for a while and come back in a few moments. All right, so check this out. Fully dry and just beautiful. Now I wrote down a couple of notes so that I don't forget. First thing, notice how this really showcases the watercolor's best characteristics. We have indeed tackled a very complex wash, but we haven't lost the flow. It still feels pretty unified. Check this area out. It's all one big shape. So we haven't lost that, which is really important. Now, from this stage onwards, what we wanna do is make sure that this works on a holistic level, meaning the entire thing and the balance of the, the details, the values and everything works in its entirety. And then also that when you look at the specific smaller areas, it still makes sense, okay? Now, there are a couple of things we need to work on and fix. Uh, one of the things is that notice how the background is very detailed because we started with that, but the foreground's a little looser and this creates a kind of conflict of interest because what we would expect often is to have more details in the foreground. So that's one thing we need to work on. More details here, while we also add more details to the background, making it look better and all of the small highlights and everything, but we must add more details to the foreground and middle ground, this section, okay? To balance what's going on in the distance. Now the sky is gonna play an important role as a balancing factor so that all of the details we're gonna add to the land area will be balanced by the sky's relative looseness, okay? The sky isn't too packed with details, which is a good thing for us. Now, another thing is, notice how the values in the foreground are darker in the reference photo, which makes them pop forward. We have to pay attention to that. This will be a major act actor in that regard. And also, we have quite a lot of shadows here. So, 
We just have to work on this area by area, patch it up, add more details, improve, and slowly build this thing up. Now I'm gonna actually get started with where we started the painting, this section. I'm gonna zoom in and we'll start adding more details. I wanna show you how I add slowly more details. M both the darker, darkest shadows and uh, some highlights with our trusty white gel pen. It's a Uniball Signo, Signo, um, white gel pen you can find on eBay, you can find on Amazon, many places. And hopefully they ship at the moment with all the coronavirus mess. Now I'm gonna zoom in on this section and we'll get started. So one of the first things we have to do is just to carefully observe and examine uh, this se section. And when I look at this, I do recognize on the left there's a bunch of details and also a bunch of very dark shadows. So I'm gonna use this uh, Perla brush, Skoda size eight uh, from the red set. It's one of my favorites. This is actually my current combination. I used two brushes from the black set, the versatile size 16, the perilous size uh, quarter inch, which is a sword, which is a really, really nice one. And then finally this Perla uh, size 8 that's good for smaller details. So this is the one we're going to use right now from the red set. The other two are from the black set, as I mentioned. And I'm just going to get started. Notice just how many details there are here at the top. Now I have the freedom to add some, add none, you know, keep this fairly loose. I do want to add some more details to these sections and I'm actually gonna make that chimney a little taller to bring it out a little more. And you see all of these railings? I want to add these in as they'll really help us build a shape. Now if you look at this section, these, the, the entire value is not black, which is good because within it we have some black sections that are darker, okay? Actually pretty big ones. For example here, we have this bridge connecting to it and we have this entire lower section quite dark, you see? Now the chimney, I'm gonna add just a touch of slightly darker value to its left. Don't worry, we're gonna patch everything up with some highlights too and it will make it make more sense, so to speak. Uh, here we have a bunch of these uh, lines around these railings or whatever that is uh, and these shadowy areas, just making them a little more accurate. Here we have just a bunch of, you know, sometimes what I'll add is just a bunch of random details, okay? But already there's more going on here, you see? Uh, there's another rail going around this section, you see? Because the previous step was so focused on um, making sure the whole thing flows, now we actually get the, the, the pleasure of working on this section by section, patching it up, making it look better, adding more details and so on, okay? And we actually have the choice of where to do this again. So when you observe the whole thing, think to yourself, okay, if I made this section more detailed, maybe I can go looser on some of the other ones. Maybe they're farther away. You know, find your own balance. There's a million of experience experiments we can make here and try all sorts of different things. There's a pipe going on here, going here. So I'm gonna add these lines, you see? just to help make it look like it's actually there and it's rounded. But in any case, there, is millions of things you can, um, there are millions of things you can try at this stage and, um, and different iterations for this painting and just try a few, try a few, have fun with it. Um, and that's what it's all about really. And, and when you encounter these references, there's always the risk of you know, just being frustrated by them. Well, try not to be. Uh, too frustrated because it all comes down to uh, how you treat it and what you make out of it, okay? So even if a reference is in theory terribly uh, dense and full of information, and first off, if you don't like these scenes, you don't have to paint them. Don't go for such a thing if you absolutely hate it. I do think it can be fun. There is something interesting in the act of letting go because you have no choice. Because this, this is so detailed, you have no choice but to let go. There is something very freeing in that if you can embrace that. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, you see these chimneys, they have this sort of a rounded pattern on them. And then I'm gonna close off this section, bring it out a little more. Um, we have to move this a bit. So let me move this like that. And I'll refocus on this area. This now, again, I do wanna balance out the left side in which I added quite a lot of detail. So I am gonna go a little emptier on this section. We have this chimney here. We have this rooftop that kind of floats above the structure. Let's add that in. 
and maybe connect it with some frame lines or you know something like that there's a bunch of these you know I don't know what you'd call these but just lines that run across the metal pieces making them read better like a structure one of the main details here is actually going to be this uh, chimney and area so let's get that right we have this rail guard going on here guardrail rail guard I don't know let me know um, for you know if you need to do maintenance work now here we don't really have uh, these lines but I'm gonna add them in because they're beautiful I think so I'm gonna just add some of them in to further bring out the roundness of this shape you see and then a couple of lines to complement uh, the edges of the structures here and we have a lot of these metal uh, beams running around these structures now Let's take a moment to observe this. I think these some of these areas should be a little muted down. So, uh, for example, this, I'm going to just make it darker, okay? And then within this slight area, I'm going to add a bunch of these details in. And actually, if you can get these lines to be straight enough like I did here, it will make a difference. It will read a little better. Now, notice the, the staircase here. There's a lot going on within it. You don't have to tackle everything, but I think it'll be nice to just have this lower line going like this parallel, and then to just place in a couple of these, you know, supportive lines, if you will, add a dark, nice little backdrop to them. And especially below, notice this entire area is very dark. And don't forget, we'll do another round with the white gel pen. So we'll get an opportunity to bring back some highlights. Um, these should go fully dark but you see how it, it starts to take shape still not fully there but it starts now here's another opportunity again near the edges to add some interest to add some details some abstract details we actually have this uh, diagonal rooftop here that I like the way it looks so let's add that in just makes for a nice industrial area uh, construction kind of um, element that you'd see often. Now here we have a lot of nice work to do. Let me move this a bit to the right here. This entire thing is really dark. I'm going to switch to my larger brush, the Versatile uh, Escoda, uh, which I really have been using so much. It's really my uh, go-to now. And this should all be darker. Now notice something interesting. There are a couple of lighter beams going through here. So I'm going to try and preserve some of them. I won't be able to preserve all of them. We're going to bring them out with the white gel pen. But just for now, I'm going to try and preserve them. So let's see how we can do that. It's not going to be easy, but here's one. This entire thing like that. Here's another one. I'm just bringing out its shape by negative painting. And you see just a bit of it is left and then we can work with that later on, okay? Now let's put in some more paint into the dark black value because I want to make sure it's dark enough. And here, this let's get rid of this. The highlight shouldn't be there. A bunch of details like so. Now let's move this a bit and notice all of these, um, see bits of diagonal lines this will help us bring out the shape of this rooftop, actually. Now we have the staircase. Now I have a tendency to sometimes paint things that are white and black and paint things that are black and white. Uh, that's fine, I actually will accept this. Uh, I don't know if you know what I mean, but sometimes there's... Like here I did a lot of it. <laughs> where it should be black, I actually, where it should be white, I painted it as if it's black. But I'm fine with that. I actually like the, the, the end result and I can always correct with my... Uh, white gel pen. So here I'm going to switch to a smaller brush again and we'll get some of these perspective lines going. You see? And that just helps to bring out the fact that these are two separate walls uh, with a very clear separation between them. The ground here, I'm, I'm barely going to even attempt to show it as it is. It's just a big mess of wires um, and metal beams. But let's go at it like something like this. Now, this thing, sorry I have to keep moving the paper, but I really do want to do this in a zoomed-in manner. 
This has a dark backdrop, this uh, small rooftop here of this shed. So just to bring out its shape a little better, I put that in. Now notice how we're getting to a point where there's a, a whole lot going on in the background, not in the foreground. So we'll, we're gonna have to soon balance it out, okay? And I'm gonna do that in just a moment, don't worry about it. Now here we have this highlight. Let's get some more wet paint so we can actually move it around. It goes around this structure and this connects to a whole bunch of shadows here. Shadows here side of the structure is pretty dark so we go like this and we have these under the rooftop you see these lines and again all of these may connect may not connect we don't know we just go for it okay that's the that's the courage part of watercolor painting you just go for it and hopefully it will connect okay and uh, if it does it's just magic and by the way I already love the way this takes uh, the shape that it takes now I'm gonna zoom back out and work on the foreground elements so when it comes to this section uh, we have to now as I mentioned balance the rest okay we have a top part that's very uh, crowded and and the bottom part that could be a nice balance by the way to not put as much emphasis here that could work as well again the rules of composition aren't really set in stone um, you have a lot of leeway. So what I'm gonna do is try not to go overboard. So there's a couple of these beams that go along here and then some that go like that and then there are diagonal beams and I'm, I'm trying to somewhat simplify but also include everything. So it's a, again, it's a tight rope um, but I think for this section that's enough for now. Uh, I can just darken some of these lower spots here because they are a bit darker. See like this. Maybe add a couple of more lines. I, I really don't want to overdo it so I'm, I'm gonna try to stop now. <laughs> um, now for this and of course some of them continue all the way down to here. I kind of missed that. Um, and by the way, I missed those lines that are also fairly helpful in defining the shape of the side of this building. Now for this, um, you see that the rail, you can see through the holes in it and that's what brings it out. I'm gonna try and make use of that. So we have this kind of a, um, the background showing through it and then it stops and then it shows through it again and then it stops and then it shows through it again and then it stops and shows through it again and then it stops. So essentially we're negatively bringing that out. Now, everything underneath it, I'll show you, should be, almost everything should be darker. So it goes kind of like this. We have a dark square here and a dark square around here because there's these, uh, you see, metal parts that you know make up the fence essentially, so here and here and that's pretty much it. I think the idea of a fence comes across here pretty well so I'm gonna probably leave it pretty much like that. Of course we could for fix the shapes but remember that this entire thing pulls up so much of our attention towards the top that the bottom can again be fairly loose actually. It wasn't my original intention but um, as I verbalized it, it became more and more obvious to me. Now comes the fun part. We'll start adding in some highlights where we need them. I'm gonna try not to go overboard again <laughs> because uh, we're gonna have a big mess on our hand if, if we go overboard. Let me zoom back in on this area and see what we can do about it. So I do recognize some railings that are fairly light that go into this uh, structure here. So you can't see, I really apologize, but to get these lines straight I have to kind of play around with the uh, the angle of my hand. Uh, now here we have just a sliver of these visible. I do want to tighten up the shape of the chimney by just straightening that line. Here this should be lighter. Compositionally for me it's not necessarily lighter in the original but I want to make it lighter just to bring out the shape you see. Now you can better see it. It has this light part here at the top. Sometimes you need to use the pen to the side and then go back because it will stop working properly. Um, we have this pipe shape here, just patching up some shapes, making them look better. We have these railings that are in the shadow, so we do need to add them in. We have all sorts of details in the shadows, but again, I'm not 
interested in overdoing it, so just putting in a few of them. Uh, whatever enhances the, the painting, really. If it doesn't enhance it, I'll try and skip it. We have, aside from this pipe, some major pipes here. Let's put one here. These shapes. We have these beautiful rounded lines that run across their shadows as well as their light parts. So I'm going to put those in, kind of like that. Again, fairly abstract and loose and, you know, just figuring out if it enhances the shape or not. I know this is a huge mess. I'm gonna balance it out with the rest. I'm gonna have fewer details there. Uh, here I don't want to put anything. Here it is important, so I'm just gonna put in a couple of these supportive beams that are in the shadow. And if you remember, I told you I paint as black what's white. This is a good example. This should be white. I have this tendency to kind of paint it as I see it, even if it means I'm wrong sometimes, but that's fine. Um, what else? We have a lot of these vertical lines here, so let's break them off with some horizontal, uh, sorry, the opposite, a lot of horizontal lines, let's break them off with some vertical lines. Um, here, let's bring out the rail, you see that it's only black, so we just bring it out like this, and patch up the shape of the actual chimney, or pipe, like so. Some rails here. Now this brings us here. I'm gonna try and drop these lines very carefully. Again, this is not acrylics where we can mix this dark value and put it on. I will, all I have is this white gel pen. So here we go. Very loose and quick. Now if we've gone too light, which we have, all I can do is take a piece of toilet paper, dab some of it out. And if it's still too uh, light, you can just get a bit of water uh, you don't even have to mix it with paint, just a bit of water and just go like this. And it tends to darken the lines we have. Don't go too much because we don't want to lift back what we had there. But in any case, still works. Uh, just one of these lines here. There is this highlight above this shadow, so I'm going to try and get that in. Like so. And that, that it actually turns around the structure. So let me do, let me get this line now. You see, like so. This will help us with the perception of perspective. Uh, what else? Let me. Well, I don't need to zoom out. You can see everything. Um, <laughs> these were actually close to wrapping this one up. I don't. I don't want to do too much here. Just adding a few details. But here it's important. Okay, we have a bunch of these lines that are lighter. That again, I painted as darker. I'm fine with that. like so. I'll actually use this section to leave something for our eyes to relax on. So I'm not gonna add too much of anything here really. I think this is acquiring the finalized look. I don't want to go overboard here. And I know I keep saying it but I do add a couple of more details here and there because there is, to be fair, there are some details you can add to make these a little lighter. Like so, there are all of these railings and, and all sorts of abstract shapes that will help us to enhance the perspective a bit, you see, like so, and then have them flow under this fence, you see, it just helps bring it in and describe the shape that goes around the perspective, uh, you know, the perspective lines and the vanishing points and everything. Uh, this bridge let's make it clear that it is a bridge indeed. It kind of ruins the perspective of this structure, to be honest. I'm gonna fix it in just a moment. So that's a bridge with lots of C diagonal lines here. And actually that fixed the perspective, it looks much better now. We have a couple of lower floors here. You know what, I think that's it, let me zoom out. So I don't know about you, but for me, that's good enough. I think we're gonna uh, wrap it up here. I'm gonna just sign it, let it dry, and then we'll remove the tape together and uh, wrap this video up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing this crazy process, so let's give it some time, wrap it up. So to be honest, I'm very, very proud of this one. I think we did an excellent job, and if you look at this and you think to yourself, I could never do this, don't, don't be so quick to think that, because uh, you'd be surprised at what's possible if you just treat every step with the, the right mindset, which is, you know, take care of the flow, then take care of some of the smaller details, try and simplify, keep the balance going, and 
treat it as a first iteration, okay? So this one's done, now let's wrap it up face to face. So this is it for this one, I hope you enjoyed it once again. Really an insane scene, and if you don't like these, again, it's fine if you avoid them, but for those who are interested in it and who are willing to go through the challenge, as you've seen, there's a lot that goes into it, but if you treat every step of the way with the right respect and, um, and the right approach that it deserves, you will eventually get to this, okay? So a lot of emphasis on flow and on just abstract shapes and, and different sections. At first, you, you look at the whole thing, you make sure that the whole thing is balanced, then later on you, you kind of focus and zoom in and aim at every section individually. And if luck has it, and if you enjoyed it, and if you had a good time, that's all that's important, but also you may produce something you're proud of. And look at this as a study for a larger piece, for a piece that's more detailed. Again, remember, you can take it the other way around completely and paint very slowly, very meticulously, larger size probably, preferably, but this is a good first attempt, and it's also an excellent final attempt if you like this look. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and if you want to learn how to paint like me, be sure to check out the frustration-free watercolor course. Link in the description box below, links to everything, and the reference photos and everything in the description box below. I really appreciate you watching the videos. I want to thank you so much. I want to wish you lots of health in these challenging times. I'm here for you. If you have any questions, drop them down below. I'm reading everything, even if it takes me time to respond, and sometimes I'll just read a comment and then say, hmm, I'm gonna make a video on it. So you'll get your response, even if it's not immediate. Okay, so thank you so much. I will We'll talk to you again real soon.